Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And I'm here today to play with toys, a variety of toys, toys that fascinate my grandchildren, toys that fascinate me because you print them flat on your print bed, you take them off, and they're movable. How is it possible to print things like this on a 3D printer in place that don't have to be assembled afterwards. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. To understand how it's possible to print something like this, we need to begin by understanding some principles about 3D printing. And so while I'm having fun with the idea that we're printing toys and my grandchildren a couple hours from now will benefit by being able to play with all of these toys, in fact, we're going to reinforce concepts that will improve your use of 3D printing technology, specifically FDM, style or filament style 3D printing technology. The first concept is very, very simple. If I have two posts and I want to print between those posts, I extrude filament from one post to the other, that's called bridging. Depending on your 3D printer, it can bridge 10 millimeters to maybe 30 or even 40 millimeters. When you bridge something, it's like putting the lintel on the top of a window. You leave a gap between it. That's very, very important. The second thing that's important is to think about the fact that when you're extruding filament, you can stop, leave a gap, and extrude some more filament. So horizontally, you can have gaps between filament. Vertically, you can have gaps between filament. That ability to have your prints include gaps in the printing process is the fundamental technology that makes this flexible butterfly possible. So let's look at a picture on the screen together. In this picture, we're going to walk through the layers and talk about the characteristics of using gaps and bridges to separate components. Layer number one is the first layer. You'll notice there are three areas of layer number one with a gap between layers. Now, the size of that gap is really very critical. Depending on your printer, you're able to print successfully with different size gaps. That depends on the tolerance of your printer. There's a wonderful Thingiverse print that you can use to test your printer. It has individual pegs that go into holes with different size gaps depending on the size of the hole. So in this first one, there's a 0.6 millimeter gap around each pin. In this one, there's a 0.2 millimeter gap around the pin. And you can see this in a close-up picture on the screen, but this was printed on my Prusa, and it was able to print these pins in place on the printer and leave successfully a precise gap at every one of the dimensions. So on my Prusa, a 0.2 millimeter gap is sufficient to allow clearance for a movable component. On the Quiddy XSmart, which is a printer that sells for, oh, I don't know, a little more, maybe 40% of the price of the Prusa when they're both fully assembled, I was only able to go up to 0.3 millimeter gaps. The 0.2 millimeter gap shown here fused. Now, it's very possible that I could tune the Quiddy X Smart more precisely to extrude filament more precisely and be able to successfully print this. But both of these printers 
are basically using the factory provided tuning with the latest version of the slicers recommended for each printer. So that's the concept of a gap. Let's go back to the picture. So you can see layer two is on top of layer one and the gap is slightly different. As we move up, you'll see we end up with a middle item, and I'll highlight that on the screen, surrounded by a gap. And on the top layer, we're bridging across that gap. Those are the concepts behind creating a hinge. So let's look at a model. This model created by Burton Wood is available for you to see on the screen here. And this is an actual hinge. So you can see in the first picture how the hinge looks closed from more or less a topish angle. Second picture is a side angle. You can clearly see both the gaps and the bridges. And the third pi picture is a picture with it disassembled. Now let's look at that same hinge in Prusa Slicer so we can see the individual layers as they would be printed. On the left, you'll see a picture of the hinge loaded into Prusa, and on the right, you'll see the bottom layer. So you'll notice in the bottom layer, the pin is separate from the rest of the print. There's a gap around it that allows it to move. Now on this next slide, we'll see it a side view, and you can see the pin extruding into the base of the hinge, the gap between the base and the next layer, and also the spacing between the individual components. So all of these different styles of hinges, and there are a variety of different styles, rely on the ability of your printer to leave gaps and to bridge between open posts. Now, what are the factors that will impact the success of these prints. In this picture, you'll see a blue line called elephant feet or an elephant foot. The very bottom layer of your print is sitting on the print bed. The print bed is heated up. If you make your print bed too hot, that layer will spread a little bit. If we look back at this picture, if that layer spread enough, the blue lines would connect and fuse the print. In fact, the first time I printed these scissor-like items on my Quiddy printer, this bottom layer fused. Let's look at a close-up of that on the screen, and you can see that there's not a lot of space there on the bottom. Perhaps it was manufactured, it was designed a bit too tight, and a number of these hinges fused together which made it impractical to move this device. So let's look at all of the factors, all of the parameters, the settings we want to think about when printing these movable items. The first one on the screen here, we already covered. If the bed temperature is too high, your print will spread and the bottom layers will fuse. In fact, this is a very interesting print of a set of gears that move inside of a heart. And I was never really able to get a great print of this on the Quiddy printer. This one more or less works, but it's pretty tight. Um, and the primary problem, once again, was the bottom layers fused together. The next thing we want to look at is called extruder multiplier and is called flow in the material section on Kira extruder multiplier in the Prusa slicer. That says how much filament should be extruded, pressed out through the nozzle for a standard width line. So if you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you want to extrude 0.4 millimeters of filament. The closer you get to that, the better your prints will be. Well, sometimes for a variety of reasons, the calibration of your stepper motors, other things, you'll be extruding a little too much or a bit too little. And you can adjust that with this flow or extruder multiplier setting. Often, to successfully print 
prints like these, or as an example, potentially to get this last pin to fit with a 0.2 millimeter gap, which is smaller than our nozzle width, I might set the flow multiplier to 0.95 or 0.90 to say extrude a bit less filament. Now in some more advanced slicers, you can vary that per layer. So perhaps you extrude a bit less in your first layer than you do in later layers, because the first layer tends to spread a bit. That's called flow or extruder multiplier. The next is printing temperature. If my temperature is too high, the filament will be softer. It will tend to spread once again. And if it touches over the gap just a little bit, it'll tend to stick together. If my temperature is too low, the horizontal adhesion will not be good. The layers will not stick together and I'll end up with layer shifts. So overall extruder temperature is something you want to calibrate. Um, in general, for prints like this, you want to err on the lower side if possible. Next, speed. Well, depending on your printer and the style of your printer, whether the bed moves up and down, like let's say an Ender 5 or the Quiddy behind me, or it moves side to side or back and forth, like the Prusa behind me, the faster you print, the more vibration you're going to end up with in your printer. The more vibration, the more difficult it is for the nozzle to lay down a line of filament at a precise point. If the vent is vibrating and the nozzle is in the same place, it's going to move that side by side a little bit. That will impact the gap. So if you're having trouble with these types of prints, one way to have more successful prints is to print them slower. And finally, an item not listed on this slide, but I should have covered, is called cooling. Because you want to make sure you have your fan high enough. Generally for PLA, most people run the fan at 100%, so that each layer cools before you go to the next layer. That will be very important when you're creating these bridges because you don't want them to droop because they're not cooling fast enough so that they touch top to bottom. So those are the key parameters. Now for the fun part, let's look at some of these prints. First, I'm gonna show you a couple failed prints. We've already looked at these hearts and I'm gonna link these because it's a beautiful design. The Precision required, the tolerances, the spacing is a bit tight. So I had a little trouble printing this on my Quiddy. I did not try this model on the Prusa. Um, and it might have printed just fine on the Prusa. But this one is a little more difficult to print. So this shouldn't be the first one you try. The next one, which I really like conceptually, is these little alligator clips for clipping things together. The problem with this print is the legs. So if you print it like this, there's a gap here next to the legs. So you have to turn support on. Now there's a version of this print that has built-in support, meaning they put extra structures under these gaps. I found those supports did not stick to my print bed very well. And I was printing this on the Prusa, which is a, a really solid printer. I also find that the gap in the neck area that allows it to bend like this is probably not quite big enough because I'm getting a little bit of friction. So this looks really cool. I'd love to remix this so that it's a little easier to print. Um, and one way to do that is to just print it bigger. Because when you print something bigger, when you expand the size in your slicer, you're not only expanding the elements, you're expanding the size of the gaps. So when you print something with tight tolerances larger, it'll be easier to print. The gaps will be larger. Now, this is probably my favorite print of the sort of the flexi style animals that are available on Thingiverse. And once again, I'll show you links to these 
And uh, as we go through, I'll show you various pictures on the screen. Uh, this print always seems to print successfully. The tolerances are very, very loose. Um, it always works. And it's a big hit with kids of every age. In fact, you show this to an adult and they say, you printed that? How is that possible? And then you have to sort of explain that. Likewise, this flexible dolphin is another wonderful, wonderful print that prints very, very fast, fun to play with. Now let's look at some more sophisticated prints. This has a very interesting mechanism. It uses pins that go into sockets to allow you to rotate all of the parts in any direction. It's a wonderful print. I'll show you the Thingiverse page here on the screen, and I'll provide a link to it down below. So this is a, uh, a wonderful desk toy for you to print for friends and family. Next, a classical desk, desk toy is a spinner. So uh, this spinner prints in place. It's very, very easy to print. There are versions of this fidget spinner where there are bearings in all four classical locations. Um, I printed this one without bearings in the corners uh, because I could print it at a higher speed because I had le less to worry about. You do need to print it with about 50% infill. This was printed with 50% infill because you want it to be relatively heavy. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful desktop toy. Um, and I have a granddaughter in high school. And uh, my grandchildren are unique because uh, they're the kids in the neighborhood whose grandfather brings them a 3D printer. Not something you see all the time. So she's printing these for all of her friends when I told the, her about these a couple days ago. Wonderful, wonderful print. This next one is quite interesting because it's the technique used for making mesh or completely flexible items. This is printed in PLA, which is not an overly flexible filament, but in essence, there's a little mini hinge between each segment. Um, this is a 3D printed snake. This exact same technique could be used to print bracelets or other types of jewelry on your 3D printer. I printed this at a 50% X and Y scale, so it would print faster. I wanted to print it in about an hour and a half instead of four hours, but an 80% Z scale. And the reason is, when you look at how the hinges worked, I wanted more spacing for the gaps on the Z axis. And this printed perfectly on my Prusa right off the printer. And finally, probably the most amazing print and complex print are these scissors. Uh, there are a variety of models for this on Thingiverse. I'll link you to one. There's even a version that you can customize to have multiple segments. As I mentioned, the first time I printed this on my Quiddy printer, the bottom hinges fused to the sides. So I could lower my bed temperature, perhaps print a little slower. It prints successfully. This printed without air off of my Prusa printer. So folks, I hope you had a lot of fun today. I had a blast preparing this video. And as I said, my grandchildren are going to have a whole bunch of fun this evening when I deliver all these new toys. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Recommend this channel. If you want to discuss this, technique more with other people excited about 3D printing, just go to forum.drvax.com. Forum.drvax.com is a discussion group with hundreds of people doing 3D printing, many of them that learned about these techniques from my videos. It's completely free and you can subscribe to it and post pictures of your favorite prints and discuss them with other people facing challenges and solutions for 3D printing. Share the channel name or the channel URL in your various discussion groups and Facebook, other places. Feel free to subscribe and click that bell, and then you'll be notified every time I publish a video. And I publish a video 
every, I'd say, five to ten days, uh, depending on my schedule. So thanks for, so much for watching. Have a great day. And most importantly, let's continue to learn together.